said we need him. Jesus said apart from me you can do nothing. And now it's in context of him talking about the vine and the branches and he literally meant separated, cut off from the vine. It's cut off from the stock. It's going to wither and die. We need him. Can't make it without him. We will wither and die. We got to have his touch, his blessings in our lives and just appreciate that song appreciate Corey and thank God for them making the effort to come all the way out here from our family. And, uh, amen just appreciate it. it's always good to be with family isn't it and friends and uh, and family sometimes aren't always friends but thankful for family that is friends amen and uh, just uh Rejoicing this morning. I'm glad that uh, uh, you can have a family of people in a, in a church that feels like family. A group of people that that uh, got your back, that you love to be with, you love to spend time with, love to fellowship with. And uh, just thank God for uh, his blessings. And God, the Bible says he fitly frames us together. He puts us in unique situations and places for us to... Uh, intermingle, and the Bible said the love of God can be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Uh, I, I think we've been uh, inundated with uh, so much truth the last week. A lot of people were confronted and almost uh, uh, we responded in different ways to uh, hard preaching. I guess you could ha call it hard preaching. It wasn't vindictive or spiteful, but it was just preaching that helps us be better Christians. And uh, some people were saying, I felt like I got my legs sawed off, and uh, I felt like uh, preacher was preaching right at me. And a couple of those services, Brother Ryan was challenging uh, people involved in ministry, challenging all of us to just kind of kind of take a step up. And uh, I, I thought about what I read one time. It said it's, someone said, it's not enough to stare up the steps. You got to step up the stairs. <laughs> it's not enough to stare up the steps. You got to be willing to step up the stairs and go to higher ground and take the, the measures that need to be taken in your life to improve yourself and be what God wants you to be. Amen. I want to uh, look at a, a verse of scripture here this morning. Uh, it's in Proverbs chapter 23, and verse number 23. I want to say again, we appreciate everyone who helped make our camp meeting a success. Uh, how many agree it was a great success? Uh, your participation. We appreciate you coming. Uh, we appreciate you giving, blessing our evangelist and preacher, and just, uh, uh, just every song that was sung. And, the effort that went into that, we appreciate our musicians showing up every night, singers singing, and, and uh, you just doing what you do in the house of God. We appreciate everyone's effort, and uh, I think God sees that, and God rewards that. Uh, this morning, I want you to stand. We're going to read a verse of Scripture in the Old Testament, and uh, just uh, trying to feel our way here this morning. I had about three or four different directions to go today. I was going to preach on hell. Amen. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why, boy. I said, just preach on Lazarus and the rich man. And one was in torment and one was comforted. And the difference between making it to heaven and not. And uh, I might do it tonight. I'm not sure. But I just feel uh, kind of torn this morning. How, how many? I got three, three different things I could preach right now. Uh, but how many help us pray right now that God's will will be done yes. in our service? And uh, just uh, let's just agree together right now. God knows every heart. God knows every need. God knows what needs to be said here this morning to accomplish his purpose. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we humble our hearts before you right now. We acknowledge our need of you. 
We pray, God, that the preaching of the gospel, Lord, will have liberty and, and the word of God will not be found in any way, God. It'll have free course, Lord. It'll prosper in the thing where unto you send it. God, it'll not return void, but your perfect will will be accomplished this morning. The ministry of your word, God, bless your people. Bless each person that's here today. We pray, God, for your blessings and agree together in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 23. The Bible says this very simply. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Buy the truth and sell it not. I want to talk this morning about truth. Uh, it's so important for us to understand truth and know what truth really is. And have a conviction in our spirit that what we believe and the way we are attempting to live for God is right. Yeah. And it's so uh, confusing sometimes, I think, when you observe the world and so many people that are attempting religion in different ways. There's such a diversity and so many different paths. And some people will teach and tell you that all roads will lead to glory. But we want to talk about truth here this morning. And uh, tell you the truth of God's word as we see it in scripture as to how we live for God, ultimately how we live our lives and where we're going to spend eternity. Buy the truth. Make the purchase of the truth. Acquire the truth. Let it come into your possession and then hold on to it. Cleave to it. Never sell it. Never forfeit it. Never let it go. God bless you this morning as you're seated. The truth. The Bible says you will know the truth. You'll have the knowledge of the truth. And the litmus test for knowing whether it is truth or error is whether you are set free or not. You'll know the truth and the truth will what? It will make you free. Uh, the truth, the Bible said, endures to all generations. It never changes. His truth is forever settled in the heavens. When we talk about truth, uh, it's very important for us to arrive at a proper understanding of what biblical truth is as to how we live our lives, how we live for God, and where we're going to uh, spend our eternity as a result of our response to the truth that was exposed to us. Philosophy seeks truth. Theology finds truth. But I think Christianity really possesses the truth. Uh, Jesus, matter of fact, said, uh, I am the embodiment of truth. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father unless they come through me. We live in a society that preaches that everything is relative. There are no moral absolutes. Uh, there's no concrete definition of what is right or wrong. There's no absolute uh, truth or error. But I've come to tell you this morning, I think the Bible is pretty black and white. It's pretty cut to the chase, and you got to believe what thus saith the Lord, or you can believe a lie, the Bible said, and be damned, but the truth will always bring liberty and life. You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. He said, buy the truth. Purchase it. Acquire it. Uh, get your name on the title. Uh, find out what truth is for yourself. Seek to know it for you in a personal way. It can come into your possession. You can buy the truth. Put your name on it and say, I've been set free because the truth uh, has delivered me and set me free. Buy the truth. And then he said, once you get the truth, never sell it. Amen. Sell it not. Once you've got it, don't ever let it go. Cleave to it. Hold on to it. Defend it. Risk your life for it. Put it all on the line. Yeah. The truth is something that's worth dying for. If you really have a conviction in your heart that you know the truth of your relationship with God. So stay with me here this morning. I'm going to talk about truth. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Uh, the Bible said there'll be those who will resist the truth. 
They turn away their ears uh, from the truth. James said there are people who are heir from the truth. Peter said the way of truth is sometimes evil spoken of. The book of Romans said they changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Uh, truth is something that people can mess up and toy with and, and try to change. But when it comes to the annals of history and ultimately uh, eternity, truth will never change. Truth endures to every generation. Man, Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. His word is truth. And the truth will still be the truth no matter who believes it or who does not believe it. The truth is the truth whether you accept it or whether you reject it. The truth is the truth whether you want to believe it or you want to deny it. The truth will never change. The bottom line is ultimately as Christians we are Bible believers and we are staking our eternity on what thus saith the word of God. We're saying this book is truth. I'm going to live by it. I'm going to die by it. I'm going to stand on it. I'm never going to turn my back on the truth of God's word. It's the truth that sets people free. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and the truth is profitable. It's profitable. And the opposite of the truth would be what? A lie or an error. And the enemy is the father of all lies. How many's ever been lied to? How many's ever had the devil lie to you? Huh? He is the father of all lies. Now I'm gonna preach to you this morning. I'm just still laying the foundation. I'm going to tell you, some of you believe lies. You believe lies about yourself. You believe lies about your past. You believe lies about where you stand with God. You believe lies about whether you can be forgiven or not. You believe lies about whether your past is too hard and whether God can even give you a new lease on life. But I come to preach the truth uh, to counter set the lie of the enemy and he speaks into your mind. The truth is the only hope we have today for our future. And we got to stand on the truth, buy the truth, acquire the truth, purchase the truth, and then don't ever sell it. Yeah. Truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. First truth I want us to understand and really get settled in our spirit. I want everyone to understand this is truth. Number one, you're a sinner and you need a savior. Amen. That's biblical truth. Amen. You're a sinner and you need a savior. Amen. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. There's none righteous, no, not one. We all need to be forgiven. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Can I just preach the gospel this morning? And I want to preach the truth of the word of God. Is a man is born into sin. He's shaping in iniquity. And you must be born again. You must have an experience with God that leads to a relationship with him. Where you know that your past has been redeemed. Your present makes sense. And your future is secure. All because of the truth of the word of God. You're a sinner. You need a savior. You see, it's the job of the enemy to lie to you and tell you, ah, you're really not all that bad. Or compare yourself with other people and say, well, they're supposed to be a Christian. Look what they do. Look how they live. And the enemy will do everything he can to keep you from believing the truth. That you need a personal relationship with God for yourself. Amen. I know I'm preaching to a whole bunch of Christians here this morning, but there may just be a few people that need to hear the truth this morning to know that you've got to have an experience with God for yourself. You don't make it to heaven because daddy was a good man. You don't make it to heaven because mama was a praying Christian. You don't make it to heaven because uh, you've got a past, a, a history, a track record of going to church. Uh, you make it to heaven because the truth uh, finds you and you have an experience with God that changes your heart. You become a new creature in him. Old things pass away and all things become new. Amen. The truth is you are born in sin and you must meet the Savior for yourself. Amen. It's a job of the enemy to lie to you and tell you, you won't die. Yeah. Isn't that what he did in the garden? You shall not surely die. Right. Right. It, it'd be all right. Uh, the truth is something that every man is exposed to. The grace of God that brings salvation appears to all men. Everybody. Is given an opportunity to respond to truth. And I say that and I think of this. No one's going to stand before God and say, I never had a chance. No one's going to stand before God, well, I just didn't know. Amen. The truth comes within reach of each and every individual. 
And you're confronted with truth when you recognize that I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it's the agenda of the preacher to convince people of truth. It's the job of the Holy Spirit to reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment, and make you aware of your need of a relationship with God. Uh, listen, real people are going to spend a real eternity in either heaven or hell, and it's up to us to be confronted with truth and do something about our future. Amen. Somebody said, hell, is truth seen too late? It's truth seen too late. You live right or you die wrong. You get right or you get left. Amen? Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Second truth. First of all, you're a sinner. You need a Savior. That's truth. Second truth that you can hang your hat on, you will usually experience what you expect. What are you expecting God to do in your life? What are you expecting God to do in your home? What are you expecting God to do in your future? What are you expecting God to do in your marriage? What are you expecting God to do in your children's lives? What are you anticipating God to do in your future experience in the house of God? Amen. I said last, I think it was Wednesday night, a uh, guy in our church testified one time, I never forgot. He said, you can believe, achieve, and receive, or you can pout, doubt, and do without. Yeah. That's just about the truth of the matter. Amen. Amen. And so many times we want to make excuses as to why we're not where we need to be or where we should be or why uh, everybody else is further along. Somebody else has got it better than I do. I like what Job said. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord took away. But I'm still going to bless the name of the Lord. I'm not serving God because what I can get out of it. I'm serving God because it's true. I'm basing my eternity on what thus saith the word of God. Amen. The truth will set you free. I got a few lies here I want to tell you that the enemy will speak to people's lives. First lie, he'll tell people, and, and, and you've probably been told this lie. If you haven't, you know somebody has been. You've been too bad, you've gone too far. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. You've made too many mistakes. You've messed up too much. You've been too bad. You've gone too far. The devil tells people that. Right. There's no hope for your future. You messed up too much. Right. You made too many mistakes. Too many failures. Right. How many know it's still a lie? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me counteract the lie with the truth of God's word. The lie is you've been too bad and you've gone too far. The truth is whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The truth is if any man comes to Christ, he will in no wise cast him out. The truth is whosoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And anyone can come and drink water, the water from the waters of life freely and understand that if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness. You've never been too bad. You've never gone too far. But it's the job of the enemy to whisper that in your ear and tell you your past is unredeemable. But I come to preach the truth to you this morning. And if you'll give it to God, he'll take it away. If you'll ask God to forgive you, he'll cleanse. He'll sanctify. He'll give you a new lease of life. A brand new beginning. One of the first things I learned as a Christian in Bible college was what the meaning of justification is. Justification. Amen. Uh, uh, one of the teachers was illustrating. He used a big uh, marker board up there and had all these marks and all these different sins and wrote all these different things, all the different iniquities and vices and sins and addiction and problems and habits. Wrote all those things on the board. And he took this big dry erase marker and started wiping it off. Then he sprayed it with a bottle of water and wiped it off and wiped that board clean. The meaning of justification is God looks at your sin just as though it never happened. Amen. Just as though you've never seen before. God forgives and forgets your past. He said your sins and iniquities, I will remember them against you no more. That's the truth. Your sin can be forgiven. And when God forgives it, he forgets it. Thank God. Redemption through the blood of Christ. And the second lie is this. Well, you may have went and asked God to forgive you, but you're really not forgiven. Yeah. How many has ever struggled with that? 
Amen. You struggle whether your sin's really been forgiven. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the Bible says as far removed as east is from west. That's how far he's removed our transgressions from us. The truth is, if God forgets it and forgives it, he will forget all about it. What sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. Third lie. We listen to this lie all the time. I hear it on radio all the time. Hear it on public radio. Hear preachers talking about it all the time. Giving lip service to this lie from hell. The moving of the Holy Ghost and uh, the miraculous manifestation of <coughs> gifts and signs and wonders, that was only for the apostles. Yeah. How many ever heard that lie? That goes. Amen. Okay. Amen. The Holy Ghost is not for today. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Ghost is not for this generation. Yeah. It's just fanaticism and worked up emotionalism. Yeah. Oh, but let me counteract the error with the truth. Let me just quote to you the scripture. The promise is unto you and to your children, to those that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. You will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And each and every generation, if they hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. You come too late to tell me that God doesn't want to move in our hearts and in our lives. God doesn't want to heal the sick. God wants to save the lost. God wants to set the captive free in this day, in this hour, in this generation. Let the Holy Ghost move in our lives. A lie from the enemy. Keep people from seeking after God's best. Heaven's best. The Bible said it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God wants to move in hearts and lives. God wants to deliver and set the captive free. Amen. Let me... Let me counteract this lie. The lie from hell. Prayer time's a waste of time. Now, I'm going to tell you how, how, how the enemy works. As soon as you get ready to pray, this is the way it works. You think about all these other things that need to be done. As soon as you get down, well, I'm going to spend some time in prayer. And, and as soon as your, your, your knees hit the ground, you think, man, i got to do this. That's got to be done. You weren't even thinking about that before you got down and ready to pray. And, and, and the enemy will tell you that prayer time is, is ought to be at the, the, the lowest part of your priority list. God help us. But God knows it needs to be at the top. Uh, one man said, I'm too busy not to pray. But we've got to seek God. We've got to have his help. We've got to have his blessings in our lives. And the truth is this. The eyes of the Lord are still over the righteous. And his ears are open to our prayer. And he hears and answers the prayer. And the cry of the righteous when we call on him. Prayer is the most effective thing. The most powerful thing you can ever engage in. Is calling on the name of the Lord. The truth is that prayer changes things. It's the truth. Is that more things are wrought by prayer than anything this world will ever know or see. Yes. Prayer changes things. Most of all, it changes you. Yes. Changes us. Yes. Amen. Whatsoever things we ask, the Bible said we receive. We keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. The truth is the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man still avails much. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. By that truth. Don't ever sell it. Don't ever let go of that. Keep praying. Yes. Don't give up on that lost child. Oh, no. Don't give up on that lost family member. Yeah. Don't quit praying for your healing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Right. Seek and you shall find. Right. Knock and it shall be opened. The tense of those verbs is, is continual. You yeah. keep on seeking. You keep on knocking. Yeah. You keep on asking. You keep on trusting. You keep on praying. Yeah. You keep on believing until the effectual fervent prayer of a right to talk you out of doing the most powerful thing you could ever engage in. It's praying and calling on the name of the Lord. Amen. Lie number five. You really can't live the life that's expected of you. Man. How many's ever had the enemy tell you that lie? Well, you're never going to be good enough. You're never going to measure up. You're never going to be able to get over that habit, get over that problem. You're never going to be able to forgive. 
Never going to be able to get over that bitterness. But it's a lie of the enemy. You can do what God wants you to do. You can do what's expected of you. The Bible said as many as receive him, to them he gives power to become the sons of God. Amen. I remember <coughs> several weeks ago now, I rented a car. And I had to go to Little Rock and I was getting some work done on mine. So I rented a little vehicle, a car over at the airport. And I drove to Little Rock and back. And I got that rental car and I was got it. And it was a Toyota Corolla. But it was brand new. It only had like 12 miles on it. I was one of the first people to drive it. And I got in that car and it was a smart car. My car's not a smart car. My car's a 2001. All right? So they got a whole lot of updates and new things going on in vehicles. I didn't know what was going on in vehicles. And I got in that vehicle and had the television screen on the dash. And I started driving down the road and I saw these two lines. Maybe your car's like, maybe you got a smart car. But these two lines, and when, when you hit the, the line along the side of the road, it, it showed that line, it beep, beep. I drove a little bit more, and I hit the, the line in the center on this side, and I saw that line light up, and beep, beep. And I went a little, a little further down, and, and about every five minutes, my car was going beep, beep. And, <laughs> You followed me before, haven't you? <laughs> so this smart car, uh, finally, after I don't know how many times, but it was built and programmed into the computer in that car. I hit the line another time and it went beep beep, and then it started flashing. And then it had a coffee cup with steam coming out. That picture of a coffee cup with steam coming out, and it said, "Please take a breath." <laughs> I said, I said, this isn't a smart car, this is a smart Alec car. And uh, so I talked back to her, I said, I'll be all right, thank you. And, uh, you know, please take a break. Uh, but you know what? God has programmed that into the life of every believer. And technology is finally catching up with, with God. And then because you see, God gave us something called the Holy Ghost that, that leads us and guides us, that, that, that convicts us when we do wrong. And when we steer a little bit to the right, the, the Holy Ghost, beep, beep. We steer a little bit to the left, and it's beep, beep. And when God and the Holy Ghost, you need to take a break. You need to stop and rest. You need to get back to the altar. You need to get things right. Get that under the blood. It's the Holy Ghost that keeps us in check, keeps us in line. It gives us the ability to do what we couldn't do before. Thank God for the Holy Ghost that keeps us in line, keeps us between the lines, keeps us where we need to be in our relationship with God. You can do what's right. You can walk in victory. You can be an overcomer. We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Amen. Amen. You can live for God in a wicked and a corrupt and a perverse and an ungodly nation, a generation. You can walk in victory. You'll follow the leadership, direction of the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. You need him. We need him. I was reading this week, this, saw this survey, this report that was provided by the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Highway Patrol officers. It said they hear all kinds of creative excuses as to why drivers give for speeding. Here's some of the officers' favorites, and these are true accounts of people who were pulled over by highway patrolmen in the state of Pennsylvania, and people responded with these excuses when the officer said, do you know how fast you were going? Or why were you going so fast? I got pulled over last week. I didn't even know I was speeding. He said, you know why I pulled you? I said, I have no idea. He said, but you were speeding. He said, you just went right by that speed stat. And you said you was going 27 and a 25. I felt like saying, well, why don't you go take care of some problems that are really happening in this town? But I didn't. I held my tongue. And because of wisdom, I got a warning. 
instead of a ticket. I, I heard one preacher preaching a revival, and he was late for church one. I may have told this here, but I don't know. But a friend of mine was preaching a revival. He said he was late for, for his service and trying to get to his meeting on time. And, and he's preaching revival every night. And, and he was going out and trying to get to the service before it started. And he said he got pulled over. He was speeding. He said, the cop came up to his window and said, uh, uh, what's your hurry tonight, mister? He said, well, he said, to be honest, he said, I'm a preacher, I'm an evangelist, and I'm holding a Bible up here at the church right down the road. And he said, what are you going to preach on, obeying the laws of the land? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, I'm actually preaching on mercy. I can sure use an illustration. <laughs> One man was doing 70 miles an hour on I-95, avoiding bumper-to-bumper traffic. After a third mile, uh, this guy was, was stopped by an officer, jumped out of his car, brushing off his pants. He told the cop that he had dropped a cigarette on his lap. He said, and I was looking for a place to park. An officer stopped a man doing 80 miles an hour. When he asked the driver whether he'd seen the speed limit signs, the man responded, well, I think I went by them so fast I missed them. <laughs> One man was going south on I-95, was stopped to Washington Avenue, and he was going 79 miles an hour. He said, my engine misses, and I'm trying to clean out the carburetor. He said, if I don't drive this fast, my car won't run. One speeder said, I'm trying to beat my wife home. Don't ask. Elderly person was stopped doing 73 miles an hour. When told he was getting a ticket, he asked the officer, is there a senior's discount? <laughs> is there a senior citizen's discount? Uh, there's, there's so many ways that we try to justify and make excuses for the wrong in our lives. But I come to preach to you the truth this morning, that if you want to walk in victory, you can. If you want to do right, you can. If you want to be an overcomer, you can. As many as receive him, he gives power to become the sons of God. We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. You can do what you ought to do. The lie of the enemy that he speaks to people and says, you'll never be able to measure up. Amen. But the grace of God is sufficient. How many found it to be true? Aren't you glad that God wipes clean the, the board? He justifies us. And the word justification means just as though we've never sinned. And then he gives us power to walk in victory over sin on a daily basis and do what's right. He keeps us between the lines. He keeps us in check. He keeps us where we need to be. And the truth sets us free and gives us the ability to walk in victory on a daily basis. Amen.